In another game today, decided on the very last play, double overtime with a team, that, a team that's really similar to the Bears, right. a rebuilding Colorado Buffalo squad, led by former San Jose State coach Mike McIntyre, looking good after dropping 60 pounds. Sonny Dykes frustrated all day. You'll notice his headset was intact when we first checked on him. We're foreshadowing here. First quarter, first play for Cal, in fact. First throw from Jared Goff, picked off by Tedrick Thompson, and he read the, the play the whole way, and so instant turnover just like that. And it leads to a touchdown for Colorado. Safe for Lou Fowle, down the middle to the wide open, Sean Irwin. 22 yards, 7 nothing Buffalo, just like that. Bears get the ball back. Goff to Steven Anderson here, who gets lit up oh. by Thompson. And no flag for a hit on a defenseless receiver. Dykes throws his headset. <laughs> Thompson, as you see, never made a play for the ball. I mean, this is almost yeah, an automatic penalty at all times now at any level. That used to be a good hit. And Sonny's headset is now split in half. All right, now Colorado's turn. Lufau with the second TD pass of the game. Play action pass. George Frazier on the score. 14-0 Buffs in Berkeley. Goff cut his right index finger. He was holding it throughout the game. Didn't seem to affect his throw. Goes down to the sideline here to Kenny Lawler. Reaches back, a little back shoulder to make the grab gain of 28. A few plays later, Goff goes to senior fullback, Lucas Gingold. You can't be more wide open here. Five yards, so the lead is cut in half, 14-7, as defense was apparently optional today. Yeah. Suing kickoff, Philip Lindsay flipped by Avery Woo. Sebastian. They will watch this in the Cal film room oh, yeah. a thousand times, backwards and forwards. Lindsay almost stuck the landing. Got some serious hang time there. Nothing more exciting than watching these special team films on Sunday. And Sonny Dykes has a new headset. Uh, just like that. But for how much longer? Lufau drives his team down the field and throws the back corner of the end zone. Didi Goodson with the over-the-shoulder catch. Buffs 321 yards of offense, 21-7 after one quarter. Great throw, either caught or incomplete. Second quarter at 320. I mean, this is a crazy yeah. game. Bears, Daniel Lasco, out of my way! And a Ah, 92 yards, Cal down 21-14. Great effort by Lasco, and frankly, it's a pretty poor tackling by the Buffs. Unreal. Unfortunately, Cal's defense hurting themselves, roughing the passer penalty, 15 yards, same drive, had a late hit call. Another 15 to that drive. This was a little weak, and thus the Sonny Dykes death stare. That is a good play. Yeah. He's just like so Been angry. Then on third and goal, pass interference penalty in the end zone. That was a good call, but now first and goal from the two. And all this leads to George Frazier, who is a terrific freshman. One-yard touchdown run. Cal, seven penalties for 70 or two yards in the first half, and the Buffs were up. 28-14 at the break. All right, could Cal turn things around in the second half? Off to a good start. Golf to Kenny Lawler. Avoids one defender. Shake and bake. Nice. 26 yards. Cal down seven. Officials, you know, let teams play a little bit more in the second half. Buffal on third down. Going for D.D. Goodson. And this is incomplete. Trey Cheek made the play defensively. Originally a flag down, the refs picked it up, and look at Mike McIntyre here. He is ready to erupt, <laughs> and that's 15 yards on Sportsmanlike. Calm down, Mike. All right, next play. Colorado punting 15 yards deeper in their territory. Dara O'Neill, terrible punt, only 24 yards, great field position for Cal. And the Bears take advantage. Calfani Muhammad finds the gap. 10 yards on the touchdown, and hey, we got a tie game, 28 apiece. Not done yet. Next drive, Goff. Lawler again, 21 unanswered points for Cal. Have their first lead at 35-28. All right, Colorado answers with a minute left in the quarter. Lou Fowl to Nelson Spruce for the first of three TDs for him. He had 19 catches, 176 yards. That's my NFL career. We're tied at 35. <laughs> Can you imagine 19 <laughs> catches in one game. 328 left. Lou Fowl to Spruce. Six yards on the score. Buffs back up 42-35. 309 left. Goff flushed, rolling. Steven Anderson. Notice how many plays in this game where guys are not even touched I on know. their way to the end zone. Defense optional. Yeah, 75 yards, 42 apiece. All right, Lufau made just one mistake passing, and this was it. Trying to force it, Jay Kearney with the interception, Cal ball in Buffalo territory. All right, Goff, his sixth touchdown That's all. pass of the game. <laughs> Deep for Chris Harper for a gain of 40. Cal back on top, two and a half minutes to go. 28 seconds left. Lufau with his sixth touchdown pass of the game to Bryce Bobo, who had a step on his defender touchdown, Colorado. We go to OT, tied at 49. Like the name, Bryce Bobo. Bobo. Cal gets the ball. 
first. Third down, Goff to Bryce Treggs. There's nobody around. Goff's seventh TD pass. Buffalo's answer on their first play in OT. Lou Fowl throws it up in the air. Spruce goes up, makes a grab, 56-56. Second overtime. Colorado has it first. And some defense, defense. finally. Fourth and goal. And Lou Fowl stopped by Jalen Jefferson and Michael Lowe. And Coach Mack is just in agony there. So Cal just needs a field goal to win it. James Lankford from 34 yards out. Good night. Game over. Drive home safely. Wow. What a finish to a wild and crazy game. 59-56. California Golden Bears. The win snaps the Bears' 15-game conference losing streak. Their last Pac-12 win was on October the 13th wow. of 2012. Goff and Lufau. These numbers are just insane. They had 449 yards passing each. Lufau, though, 46 of 67 <laughs> attempts. Goff, a more modest 23 of 41, both with seven TDs and one pick. All right, the teams combined for 115 points and 1,205 yards. Buffalo had 15 more first downs than Cal, one time of possession by 13 minutes. Here's Rick Kwan with head coach Sonny Dykes after his first Pac-12 victory with the Bears. Coach, uh, congratulations on getting your first conference win. I guess you got had a couple of gray hairs in the process, too, huh? Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> wasn't easy. It's, it's never easy to win a college football game these days, especially, you know, with the way people score. And, you know, you better play 60 minutes, and luckily we, uh, we were on the, the right side this week. How big is this win for this team, especially coming off last week's heartbreaking loss? Well, it shows a lot of character. I mean, these kids uh, have worked incredibly hard. They've persevered. They've seen a lot of adversity, and I'm just really proud of them for coming out and believing in each other and playing as hard as they played. And certainly, it's nice to get a win. And you were talking about the mental part of the game, too, not just hoping you can score or thinking you can score, but believing you really can score. Yeah, a big part of, of you know, becoming a good team and a good program is, is expecting to be good, expecting, you know, to, to make a play, um, you know, wanting that pressure on you and wanting to be the guy that has to deliver down the stretch. And, you know, the good thing is we've got a lot of guys who are starting to develop into those type of players. I mean, they want the ball in critical situations. They want to be the guy, um, you know, that's got to make the tackle in the open field and that type of thing. And, and when those guys start to develop that, then, then you start to have uh, a good football team and, and it's fun to, to see it grow. So how are you going to celebrate tonight? <laughs> I'm worn out. I'm going to go home and go to sleep. <laughs> That was a four hour and something oh. game. I mean, it was just so crazy. Uh, Jared Goff, not flashy, but I know you really like his demeanor and the way he goes about his business. Well, his demeanor, as you mentioned, reminds me of one Joe Montana. Joe Montana? Stay with me here. Yeah. He stays <laughs> calm in the pocket. You were invoking the legend of the godlike the figure? the entire field, thin as a reed, not a strong arm and accurate. Joe never had his stats, and what a day Jared had. 23 of 41, 449 yards, averaging 11 yards per throw, and a career-high seven TDs and one pick. Now, the interception happened on the first play from scrimmage. If there were, this was last year when he was a true freshman, might have rattled him, but not anymore. He also suffered a cut on his right index finger, which a quarterback needs in order to get a good spiral on the ball, but he didn't let it affect him the whole game. These two setbacks, uh, despite golf powered through, turned it into the best game of his career. He can throw. He's not afraid to go for the long ball. He knows he's accurate enough to make those throws. That's what Joe was so good at. He was so accurate. And this year, he's picking up the blitz. He knows he's going to get hit, reads the blitz, still gets the throw to the receiver, resulting in a big game. I just love this kid, his demeanor. I think he's going to be a good one here. And here's Rick Kwan with Jared. It's a, it's a game we needed. game we needed, a game like that that we needed coming down to the end like that after last week. And so proud of our guys. Couldn't be prouder right now to be a Golden Bear. You're down 28-14 at the half, and you guys fought back, took the lead, lost it back and forth all day. Yeah, it was a hell of a game. You know, I, I got a lot of respect for Colorado. I told them after the game. Their quarterback, their whole offense, their defense, I got a lot of respect for them. They played well. Especially sweet coming off the last week's it's, heartbreaker. Yeah. It's, it's especially sweet, definitely. I mean, last week was just a heartbreaker, like you said, and it hurt. And, uh, you know, this would have hurt just as bad if it would have gone the other way. And luckily, uh, James pulled it out right there. Just one win last year, this year already three and one. Could easily be four and oh. What's the big difference between this year and last year? I think it's our mentality. Our team's mentality is 180 degrees different. And we just we just know what we want to do now. We know what we need to do, we know how to do it, and we're just ready to roll. Oh, think about this. Cal is one play away from being four and oh. 
if they had just knocked down the right. helmet. Somebody would have jumped up with those four guys. But they're also one play away from being two and two yeah. if they had lost this game. So it shows you just how, it's just like Sonny was saying, that's how crazy college football is. So if Goff is Montana, uh, is Rubenzer Steve Young? <laughs> Not <laughs> yet. We, we didn't see Luke today very much, if all. And uh, I think that's good. you got to stay with one quarterback during a game. He needs to get in a rhythm, especially in a game like this when you're just going back and forth like a track meet. So I think it's a good move by just sticking with golf. And like Jared said to Rick that, you know, they know what they want now. They know what Sonny wants out sure. of on offense and defense. So big, big difference in their second year under Sonny Dykes. Just imagine if you put the Cal offense with the Stanford, Stanford defense, defense right. you'd have Oregon. You'd have, it, yeah. you'd have Oregon is what you have. Oh, 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 oh wow. It's a rough room. Yeah, right. It's a rough room. All Hang right. on. I'm just, it's just a joke. Larry okay. Godbeal at ABC.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up for the Bears, a trip to the Palouse. Get loose on the Palouse. Cal heads to Pullman to take on Washington State. The Cougs came with it, a touchdown of upsetting number two. Oregon last. See, they're beatable. Shoot. Right. They're not that good. Right. Another night road game for the Bears, which doesn't help us at all. Uh, 7.30 kickoff at Martin Stadium.